Hey guys, welcome to the Animation Movies Recap. This is David with you. Today I'm going to recap a 2012 Spanish 3D computer animated adventure comedy film called, Tad, The Lost Explorer. I love the movie very much, and hope you would like too. So, without any further ado, let's start with the recap. The film opens by showing a helicopter, Eagle 107, passing through dangerous hills and finally makes it to the pyramid in Egypt. Seems like an explorer team is on a mission to find something very valuable. But within a moment, everything changes and it turns out that it was the imagination of a small boy, Tad Stone, who considers himself an archaeologist and is digging in the front yard of his house to dig out something valuable. Just then, two boys appear and mock him saying that he is a loser who never finds anything and is wasting time in vain. However, he then finds something which looks like a cufflink. He thinks that it is made of gold and rushes inside the house to show it to his grandmother. When Tad was five, his parents died in a car accident and since then his grandmother is raising him. However, his grandmother doesn't want to make him disappointed, she says that she found one of his father's cufflinks and makes him believe that one day he is going to find something very precious. She then makes him sleep and leaves. The Egyptian mummy on the billboard outside his window makes him tremble in fear, and he immediately hides. He then warns the mummy saying that one day when he will grow up then he can't scare him anymore. Cut to a few years later, Tad has grown up and facing a very hard time saving an ancient pod. He was in the middle of a pool filled with hot lava and numerous mummies were chasing him. Finding no other way left, he jumps and grabs a rope above to save the pod. Just then, a man with a great temper appears and shouts at him to stop. It turns out that Tad is actually a construction worker and was doing all this in his imagination. The boss makes him down before he does something messy. And in a rage, he fires him from the job. Tad is not sad at all and happily goes to visit Professor Humbert at the Metropolitan Museum to authenticate the ancient pod that he just rescued. He shows the bottle to Professor Humbert and after he examines the bottle, he finds that it is just a replica which makes Tad very disappointed because previously he had rescued many things but none of them were valuable and now this one also turned out to be nothing but a worthless coke bottle. However, Professor Humbert gives him assuagement by saying that one day he will surely find something really valuable. He tells him not to stop dreaming and keep moving on like a rolling stone. However, Professor Humbert then gets the letter sent by Professor Lavrov. The letter states that Lavrov has found the other half of the key to the golden city of Paititi. Professor Humbert has the remaining half of it, which means that they can now infiltrate the lost golden city of Paititi. Professor Humbert shouts out loud with joy because he has been waiting for this moment for more than 30 years and now it is going to come true. They are going to make the biggest archaeological discovery since King Tut's tomb. However, Professor Humbert then comes to know that Lavrov called him to Peru and booked a ticket for him. Unfortunately, the ticket is for today, 7 p.m., he has only two hours left to get to the airport before the plane leaves. He is totally baffled about what to do and desperately rushes to the airport by Tad's car. Now, let me tell you a little bit of the backstory. According to legend, 500 years ago, when the Incas discovered that Spaniards wanted all their gold, they asked Mother Nature for help. Mother Nature told them to take all their gold to a secret place called Paititi. They hid the treasure over there and in exchange, Mother Nature gave them a magic golden statue named, Golden Indian of Paititi. The statue has magical powers and whoever guards it will be blessed with the gift of immortality. And the piece of a tablet that Humbert has is proof that the city still exists. However, Professor Humbert reaches the airport, but in the rush, he leaves his back and mistakenly indulges in an accident. Tad rushes to him with the bag but instead of giving him the blue blood pressure pills, he gives him the wrong red ones which were sleeping pills. Professor Humbert falls asleep right away. The nurse checks him and says that they will take him to the hospital and pump his stomach. After a few days of rest, he will be fine. Tad has no other choice, so he decided to fly to Peru in the professor's place. On the other side, an agent is seen following them secretly. Just after being sure that they have the tablet, he sends their photo to his boss. Cut to Tad, he is about to fly to Peru with his dog, Jeff. As he was the number one fan of Max Morton, a great archaeological finder, he watches his show before the flight takes off. Soon, the plane lands in Peru. Tad meets the man Professor Lavrov has sent to pick him. The man introduces himself as Freddy who carries many items with him so that he can trade them with someone. At first, Freddy misunderstands him as Professor Humbert. Tad then makes him clear that he is not Professor Humbert, Professor Humbert sent him in his place. He hides his true identity and introduces himself as Professor Tad. However, Freddy then tries to make a trade with Tad and he was so stubborn that Tad was reluctant to buy an item. I am really sorry that I don't know what it is called. However, the agent is seen who is still following him. Just then, Sarah Lavrov, the daughter of Professor Lavrov comes there. Tad immediately grows a crush on her. While he was busy staring at her, the agents kidnapped him right away. Sarah and Freddy then chase the goons to make Tad free. Cut to Tad, 
The leader of the goons, Kaponen, scares Tad with his robotic hand and tries to spit him off where the tablet is. Tad tries to make them believe that he is not Professor Humbert but a construction worker who is fired from his job. But they don't believe him. He then shows them his passport to make them believe him. While Kaponen was observing his passport, he, with the tool he just purchased from Freddy attacks him and somehow manages to escape from their captivity. Sarah and Freddy pick him up right away. They are about to lose the goons behind but an agent shoots a tracker device at their car and the dog, Jeff, swallows it out of curiosity. Sarah is a little bit suspicious of Tad, but he makes him believe that is a newcomer who is being working with Professor Humbert not for so long. Sarah then mocks him saying that nowadays she even has to work with a rookie like him. However, when they reach Professor Lavrov's lab they see everything messy. Sarah immediately understands that someone must have broken into the lab. Just then, a mute parrot, who belongs to Professor Lavrov, appears at the window. Sarah lets him come in. He then hands her the other half of the tablet with a piece of paper attached to it. The piece of paper states that Professor Lavrov has gone to Machu Picchu and told her to take care of this tablet so that it does not fall into the wrong hands. Sarah asks the mute bird, Belzoni, about the reason behind Professor Lavrov's going to Machu Picchu. He then tries his utmost to act and finally succeeded in making them understand that someone with a robotic hand is chasing him. Tad recognizes that it is the same guy who kidnapped him. Sarah, Tad, and Freddy then set out for Machu Picchu. Kaponen and his men get into the train following them. An agent sits next to them and right after being sure that Sarah has the tablet, he informs his boss, Kaponen. Kaponen then approaches Sarah to get the tablet but Sarah refuses to give it to him. But one of Tad's wrong movements makes the tablet land in his hand. They are about to lose the tablet but, thanks to the bird, Belzoni, he snatches it and flies away. But at one point, he collides with a sign, and the tablet lands on the rooftop. Kaponen climbs onto the roof to get the tablet but Tad manages to get the tablet before him. Kaponen attacks him with his robotic hand but Tad manages to dodge him and his hand gets stuck. However, Kaponen immediately detaches the stuck portion. While he is about to shoot him, he sees that the train will be in the tunnel within a moment and they are going to be smashed. He immediately jumps down the roof and chases them towards the tunnel. Sarah and Tad on the other hand, luckily managed to get inside the train before the train goes into the tunnel and survived. They land into the bogey which is carrying horses in it. However, to escape the goons they flee by stealing the horses which were kept over there. Meanwhile, Sarah comes to know that the goons are from Pirate Odessus, who seeks treasures from all over the world. These guys lie, steal, and even murder to get their hands on them and sell everything to the highest bidder. Odessus don't care about history and culture, he just wants money and power. Long story short, they finally reach Machu Picchu. But when they get to the place where Professor Lavrov was staying, they see everything vandalized which means Odessus have been here first and have taken her father. Sarah is sad but Tad consoles him saying that he will help to find her father. Soon after, Tad comes to know that Sarah is going to marry Max Morton which makes him a little bit sad despite the fact that he is his number one fan. However, Sarah then remembers one of his father's saying and understands that there must be a way to Paititi in the ruins of the Nazca Desert. They have the tablet which is the key for it, so they can easily make it to Paititi. Just when they are about to leave for Nazca Desert, Odessus guys get there and eventually corner them, but they manage to lose them behind and fly to Nazca Desert using a burger-shaped hot air balloon. On their way, they notice that Jeff is behaving abnormally and loosened all his appetite. Even shows no response to his favorite super cookies. Soon after, he pukes the tracking device that he had swallowed. But it was too late because the Odessus gang has already reached them by helicopter. They took them captive to the place where they have kept Professor Lavrov and Max Morton imprisoned. Kaponen then forces Sarah to give the tablet to them. He uses the tablet as a key to making the map visible so they can make it to the lost golden city of Paititi. Kaponen forces Professor Lavrov to decode this map for them and threatens him that if he doesn't do so, they will kill her daughter. Professor Lavrov is reluctant to do it for them. But he plays a trick and misleads them by reading the fake map where the original map is located behind this solid rock. Professor Lavrov winks at Sarah to give her a hint about the real map hidden behind. Kaponen then takes Professor Lavrov and Max Morton captive to find out the place where the golden city of Paititi is buried so that they can dig out and get to the treasure hidden there. Tad and Sarah are locked inside and are finding a way out. However, Tad and Sarah eventually find out that this solid rock is just a door to get to the real map. They push the solid rock and finally make it to the real map. Meanwhile, Freddy removes an ancient disc from its place which causes the roof to descend, which means they are going to be crashed if they don't find a way out. Before the roof crashes them, Sarah successfully decodes the map. Just when they are about to be smashed, the dog, Jeff, finds a way out and they all are saved. Using an excavator they all head toward the jungle where the map indicates Paititi is located. On the other side, Odessus is digging in the wrong place, in the desert. Cut to Tad, Sarah, 
and Freddy, they traveled a long way to get to the jungle. The night comes and they decide to spend the night there. Sarah and Tad gossip with each other. Sarah says that she is happy that she is going to marry Max Morden, possibly the most eligible bachelor on earth. However, she regrets that he is a workaholic a lot like her dad. Tad shares that he is more than happy that he is living his dream of being an archaeologist. Tad is about to tell her his true identity but resists himself at the very end point. Sarah falls asleep resting her head on his shoulder. But he can't close his eyes a bit throughout the whole night. Seems like he is overexcited that Sarah is sleeping in his lap. Cut to Caponin, they are digging for 24 hours and found nothing. Caponin realizes that Professor Lavrov is playing with them. Cut to the jungle, the next day, while they are walking through the jungle a wild puma attacks them. The others except Tad climb into a tree to escape from the puma. At one point, Tad was about to be caught by the puma but the others managed to chase it away throwing coconuts at him. Long story short, they eventually spot the symbol of Paititi. Tad checks it and realizes that it is hollow from the inside. All of a sudden, the rock breaks and Sarah is about to fall down but Tad grabs him in time. A lot of bats come out of that pit. On the other side, while Professor Lavrov was observing them, Caponin approaches and snatches his binoculars, and spots something strange going on in the jungle. He immediately rushes toward the jungle with his troop. Cut to Tad, he throws a plumb bob into the pit to check its depth but a mysterious hand catches the bob and prevents it from hitting the ground which makes Tad misunderstand that the pit is severely deep. Soon after, Caponin with his gang gets to the place. They again make Sarah, Tad, and Freddy captive. Caponin then moves down the pit with Professor Lavrov, Sarah, and Max. Max beckons the goons to kill Tad and Freddy. While they notice it, they immediately understand that Max is also in their team. Cut to Caponin, there are two doors in front of them and they have to choose the right one. Professor Lavrov again misleads them and tells them to take the left one. Cut to the goons, they are about to kill Tad and Freddy but they somehow manage to knock out them with the help of Jeff and Belzoni. However, Tad then moves down the pit but he chooses the right door and soon is confronted by a mummy who is the protector of the golden statue. Both of them are terrified to see each other and run away desperately. Soon, Tad meets with the rest of the team. He tries to make Sarah believe that Max is an evil man who ordered his goons to kill him and Freddy. Max refuses to accept the accusation and instead discloses Tad's true identity to Sarah. Sarah is hurt that Tad lied to her. Just then, one of the goons calls him boss and seeks his permission to kill Tad. Sarah immediately understands that he is also with them and slapped him hard. In a rage, he makes Tad and Sarah move to the gunpoint. On the other side, the mummy is desperate to kill them and releases a fiery metal ball toward them, but they somehow manage to escape the attack. Soon, they reach a place where there were many keepers. The Incas use them to keep track of their supplies. Pulling the right kipu will make them to the chamber of the golden statue. The crooked Max Morden then pulls the golden kipu which causes the floor to crash. All of them desperately try to survive. At one point, Tad, using the item he purchased from Freddy makes Caponin fall down. Professor Lavrov then reads the signs written on the wall and shouts at Tad to pull the red one which is the right kipu. He eventually pulls the right kipu and a door to the chamber of the golden statue opens. Max runs desperately to be the first to have the golden statue. Just when he tries to pull the statue up, the mummy attacks him riding on a humongous stone monster that is controlled by two transcendent stones. However, Max manages to fool the mummy and snatches the stones. The mummy is about to fall down the cliff but Tad pulls him up. Max then proceeds to kill Tad by riding the stone monster. Max is about to smash Tad, but the mummy helps him to defeat crooked Max Morton. He throws the plumb bob toward him and Tad makes it to hit him in the forehead. Because of this he loses his control and falls down from the monster. The monster on the other hand, before falling down from the cliff hits the golden statue, which crashes its protective shield. Greedy Max Morden runs desperately towards it and pulls up the statue thinking that he is going to have immense power and will become immortal. But within a moment, his expectation turns into grief and he also turns into an immortal mummy which he didn't expect ever. He then reveals the treasure of the Incas and everyone is stunned to see it. The mummy then orders his people to take him to their darkest cell as a punishment for trying to steal the golden statue. At last, Tad promises the mummy that no one will ever know about this place and give him the most valuable treasure that he had found at the age of five. The mummy is eventually convinced that he is really a good man and lets all of them return. They all come out from the pit. And when Freddy comes to know that they found nothing in there is really disappointed because he has traveled a thousand miles and returning home with nothing. In the last scene, Tad confesses his love to Sarah and they kiss. With this, the movie ends. This is for today, see you soon with a new movie recap video. Till then, stay happy and chill out.